Well, we had some strong senators during the Depression that uh, convinced Congress to let go of more money. And it was pretty tough to do. Uh, you had senators up there going, why in the world would we give this crazy coot money to make a statue in the middle of nowhere nobody's ever going to see when we got people out of work in this country? You know? yeah, good points, but, uh, but nonetheless, they would let go of a couple hundred thousand dollars and then he would hire another 20-some men, uh, usually different men, because uh, when they let go of the last men, they went and got jobs somewhere else. So he'd have to retrain the carvers and stuff, and uh, so even though uh, he worked, they worked on it from October 1927 to October 1941. That's 14 years. They actually worked on the mountain about six years uh, because uh, they kept running out of money, and they'd have to wait a few months, you know, to get some more. And then uh, also during the winter time, when it was covered with ice and snow, it was a, uh, they wouldn't work up there because of safety. And not a single life was lost. Well, this is Iron Mountain Road. We're going to figure out why motorcyclists love this road. Uh, this is probably one reason. It's a spiral bridge, wooden spiral bridge, designed to gain altitude up the side of the hill without doing switchbacks. Yeehaw, it's fun. That's pretty cool. This road was built 1930 to 33, and majority of the work was done by the CCC, Civilian Conservation Corps. It was the brainchild of our uh, senator and Congress who helped uh, Borgham get money, Peter Norbeck. Years before, he was a governor of South Dakota from about 1916 through uh, 1920s, and then uh, became a senator. Uh, as governor, he started Custer State Park. And uh, in 1917, he purchased the first 36 buffalo to go into the park. And he enlarged the park from its original game preserve uh, to where it is now the second largest state park in the country. Only one other state park is larger, and that's the Adirondacks in New York. Most state parks are pretty small because the taxpayers of that state have to uh, keep it up, you know, the cost. And a lot of state parks don't make money, so it's just a burden on the taxpayers. And I am told that this bridge here, this uh, wooden spiral bridge, is the longest wooden spiral bridge in America. Pretty cool. It's hard to get a picture of it because of all the trees. I've tried and tried. The best way is to helicopter, you know, get up there and helicopter. Easy to navigate, you just crank the wheel to the right and you hold on. Yeehaw! Round and round we go. And we're still going around. We're not done yet. And still going around. Yep, yep, still going around. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm starting to get dizzy. Off in the distance, there's the Mount Rushmore. Pretty amazing. When he built this road, it was designed to show off Mount Rushmore from around every corner. Uh, you could see Mount Rushmore, but that was back in 1930. Uh, the trees have grown since then, so you can't always see it uh, from all positions like they used to. Everybody comfortable back there? Yeah. Awesome. Pretty good. Okay, good. Uh, temperature all right? Okay. Keep me informed. I think it's supposed to be, uh, the high is about uh, 84 today, but that's in Rapid City, so it might be about 80, 81 up here in the hills. It's usually about 4 or 5 degrees cooler elevation. Yeah, horn. Yep. I'll scare the bicyclists. All right. I've well, got a nice little tunnel here. Woohoo! That, uh, that Class C might have trouble getting through. I don't know. It, you might be able to make it. 
Alright, we've got... I'm going to stop here so uh, we can get a picture of this tunnel. And there's something rather interesting about this tunnel, too. I know what eh? Don't tell anybody, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So get grab your camera. And... Uh, Huh? Uh, this is how it was in the area, Mount Rushmore. Now we're beginning to see why motorcyclists love this road. <laughs> and it's pretty awesome. I didn't leave anybody back there, did I? Oh, okay. Well, as long as I got 80%, I'm doing good. <laughs> Yeehaw! These are so much more fun to drive than interstates. <laughs> interstates are kind of boring. I think they're more challenging, too. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Every time I get worried is thinking that, you know, we get tourists from England and they fly into Rapid and they rent a car. What road are they going to go down? Just, hmm. Unfortunately, they do have do not enter signs. And, and this is the third and final spiral bridge. We like to call them pig tail bridges because of a pig's tail is curlicue. This one ends rather abruptly right into the side of a cliff. Yes. And this is the C.C. Gideon Tunnel. C.C. Gideon was the engineer who built this road in the tunnels and bridges. Woo! If you look uh, above my shoulder and through the trees, there they are again. Do they keep the trees trimmed? They do. Okay. Okay, motorcycle, go ahead. Go around. Yeah. Here comes a Jeep also. Yeah, yeah I see him. Okay. Yeah, for a lot of these people here, they didn't see the, uh, in the first tunnel, they didn't notice that they could see Mount Rushmore. So that's why they're stopping there, because, oh, look, we can see Mount Rushmore through this tunnel. Not knowing that the other two tunnels, if they don't look behind them, they're not going to see it. And they'll see a postcard like this, and they'll go, we were on that road, we never saw that. But that's why you have a tour guide, you know, to help you out. The Black Hills is tourism with over 3 million visitors to Mount Rushmore, maybe 4 million this year. And uh, number two economy is the timber. We have several sawmills throughout the Black Hills and we have uh, a lot of independent loggers, with many owning their own trucks, and they contract with the Forest Service and thin out the trees. And you can see the benefit of thinning them out. It opens it up and allows sunlight to get through and allows uh, grass to grow and shrubs which is food for deer and elk and bighorn sheep, mountain goats, and also uh, new trees start growing. In a very thick forest, a pine forest, uh, the forest floor is covered with pine needles and there's no grass growing and there's no food there. Also, uh, when it's really thick, if there's a wildfire, it burns very hot and very fast. When it's spread out like this, it slows down the wildfires and also uh, slows down uh, you know, uh, the advancement of any um, uh, insects like the mountain pine beetle or any diseases, uh, tree diseases. So it's a, it's a great way to manage a forest. Another benefit that most people don't realize is it's good for uh, allowing the snow melt and the rain to seep through to the aquifers and fill up the wells and the uh, springs which fill up the uh, little uh, little uh, creeks which fill up uh, lakes, dams. 
uh, these trees are very thirsty and, and uh, when they're all clumped together like that they drink about every ounce of water that uh, falls in the rain and they also uh, drink a lot of that snow melt and then you have kind of a drought condition because the uh, springs dry up and they're not feeding the uh, lakes and streams. That's why Mother Nature likes a good uh, wildfire, forest fire now and then. Gets rid of the old trees, the dead trees and the infested trees and opens it up for a few years to lots of rainwater and snow melt and replenishing all the underground aquifers and stuff. If you got your camera, uh, there's a nice picture right up here. I'm going to slow down and they, they have more black bear there in one place than anywhere else. There's a park ranger. He's got, uh, must have a dog or something. Did I see it? He's got a cage there. This is that fire of 1986. You notice how the trees are, oh yeah, maybe 15 feet high or 20 feet high. Um, they're the result of uh, automatic reseeding after a fire. A fire heats up the pine cones and inside the pine cones are hard shells that have got the seeds in them. And they split open and you got a new forest growing. In some places, like the side of the hill here, there aren't many trees growing, and that could be for two reasons. Number one, there may not have been many trees there to begin with. And number two, uh, the fire could have stalled and burned so hot it even consumed the pine cones as fuel. And that creates open areas, which Mother Nature loves, as well as herds of uh, browsing animals, uh, the deer and elk and, and uh, and rabbits and wildflowers and ground squirrels and things like that so it's nice to break up a forest into some meadows and stuff uh, um, it will help control uh, the fires as well as uh, add uh, places for water and, and uh, snow melt to seep down to the aquifers how much snow do you usually get up here well uh, the rapid city down on the uh, prairie uh, I would say that there's an average about 90 inches a year and then up in the higher hills it's uh, you get up around Leed and Deadwood and the ski area um, you can average up to 300 inches a year uh, not at one time except on freak storms I think in 2008 in April the first part of April Mother Nature dumped five feet of snow on Lee and Deadwood there. It made the news. So it just, uh, just kept falling for uh, about a day and a half. Wet, heavy wet snow. Well, 2013 we had a October blizzard. Yep. Yeah, in 2013 there was an October blizzard that dropped about three feet of snow all over this area and uh, ended up killing uh, thousands of uh, cattle and sheep and a lot of other animals did a lot of damage uh, on roofs and broke a lot of trees. But that's just, uh, that's just the, the fires and blizzards are the risk of living in a beautiful forested area. And I, I think it's small risk for the pleasure you get out of it. See all this red dirt and red rock and clay? That's part of this, what is known as the Spearfish Formation. The Black Hills are made up of three distinct formations. On the outside edge of the Black Hills is this red rock and dirt Clay called the Spearfish Formation, named after the town of Spearfish up in the northern hills off the Interstate 90. And then uh, just inside of that formation here, this formation is a narrow band of limestone. That limestone formation is referred to as the Paha 
Sapa formation. Paha Sapa is Lakota Sioux words for black hills or hills that are black. And um, it's in the limestone formation where you'll find all the caves that uh, you can take tours of. Uh, Wind Cave and uh, Jewel Cave, Rushmore Cave, and, um, and Wonderland Cave, and, and Black Hills Cave, Caverns. Yep. All right. Now, if you come in uh, this way or other ways, you're going to have to stop and get a uh, entry fee, a little ticket for your window. It's $20 uh, for a vehicle, good for seven days. We have a contract with them. We got this little sticker in the window over in the right. Uh, so we pay them uh, at the end of every month, we send them a check for the number of people we bring into the park. It's nice to be in a state that kind of trust is trustworthy. Um, so we don't have to stop and they don't count, you know, they just trust that we're going to give them the right number. And to my knowledge, most of them that I know of are doing that because they don't want to lose that, um, that benefit of not having to stop. Yeah. And they give us a, a little bit of a cut rate, but, but I guarantee it's more than $20 today. <laughs> Oh, goodness. We're not very far from the State Game Lodge. And we're going to eat. Uh, and uh, probably about the time we're done eating, I'll collect for the tour. Uh, they should have a table set up for us. And um, again, the uh, waitresses, uh, our waiters will uh, give. Uh, each party a ticket and you can uh, pay them. Uh, make sure you try out the buffalo stew. You know, buffalo is a... Uh, everybody okay? Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah we're pretty good. Uh, uh, buffalo is actually uh, one of the more uh, healthy red meats that you could eat. Uh, if you compare one ounce of buffalo with one ounce of beef, one ounce of pork, and one ounce of chicken, the buffalo has less fat, less calories, and less cholesterol than the other three meats. So on those three formations I was telling you about, uh, the middle of the Black Hills is the Deadwood Formation. That's the oldest formation. In fact, it's the oldest formation in uh, the United States. We have rock on the surface that dates back uh, about two and one half a billion years old lying on the surface. Even Mount Rushmore and Crazy Horse are about one and a half billion years old. That's pretty awesome. Custer State Park, of course, is named after Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer of the 7th Cavalry. Or they often call him General Custer. Uh, that was the highest rank he attained during the Civil War. Uh, at the Battle of Little Bighorn, uh, all of his men are buried there, with the exception of Custer. He is entombed at West Point in New York. And uh, the reason he has that honor is uh, during the Civil War, at the age of, I think, 24 years of age, he was a, a temporary two-star general. 